right, let's continue on with the next button. The next button, there are a number of things that need to happen as soon as the next button is clicked. One of them is to set that web viewer back to false again. So I'm going to just copy and paste from here and set the visibility of that web viewer to false. Next, we've got some reset to do. So the A, B, C, and D buttons have an initial color, and we're going to set that background color back to that neutral. So for me, that color was white. So the button's color right here needs to change to white. So setting the A button back to white, and since we need three more, pretty easy to just put them in here and then change this one to B, this one to C, and this one to D. Next, we're going to set the text that's inside that answer box back to nothing as well. So I'm going to go over here and find answer text, and we're going to set the answer text text to nothing so that it's empty waiting for them to press a button again. So answer text text, there we go. And we're just going to grab an empty text box here. In addition, we want the answer text background color to be white. Let's see if we can recycle this one, change its background color. Of course, that no longer fits into that, so it throws it out. And we can go back to colors, or I can even control C, control V, that right there. So that happens when the next button is clicked. Then we get to the logic part of this, where we need to check and see, is it the last question? If it was, then we need to calculate the score and be done. Otherwise, we're going to go to the next question. So let's get an if then else going here. So here under control, I'm going to get an if then else. Oh, that's a plug in one. What we want is just an if then. And we can click on this little blue part here and add the else into it. So we've got if then else. So if the index equals the end of the list, then we're going to calculate the score. Otherwise, we do something else. So let's go ahead and do that comparison. So here under logic, we're going to check to see if we're at the end of the list. And the number we're checking is the index number. So let me go ahead and find my variables, and we're just going to get the variable called index. Next, we're going to check it against the length of the list called the global question list. So let's go ahead and check the length. Let's scroll down here until we find length of list. Here it is. And which list are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the question list. That's the best one. We have the same number of answers and articles and everything else, but we're really talking about the questions here. So we're going to go ahead and get a variable called global questions list. Global questions list. So if the index has gotten to the end of the list, so if there are 10 questions and this value is now 10, then we need to calculate the score. So there's a couple things I like to do at this point. We've had the font size pretty small uh, in order to fit all of the question and answers onto the screen. But what, now that we've just got a score to show, we can make that font size bigger. So I'm going to change the question label and answers label font size to something bigger. So let me find the questions label. So set the questions label uh, font size. And you may have to experiment to see what values you really want to use here. But I'm going to start off with just a value of, let's say, 20 and see how that works. Now that's the questions label. We also need to do the answers label because we're going to use both of those to display how many they got right and then what the percent score is. So I'm going to simply copy and paste that. I'm going to change the answers label font size to 20 as well. Next, we need to change the, the text of the questions label to the number of points that they got. So let me go ahead and take the questions label again. So 
So now we're going to set the actual text of the questions label to something new as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that underneath there. And instead of the font size, now we're changing the actual text. And we're going to get rid of the font number there. So the text itself, we need to join some text and then what their score is to it. We've done that before, so let's just do that again. So I'm going up here to the text and we are going to join two things. The first is going to be just some text in there that says the number of points that they got. So we can just do something simple or you can get more elaborate later. Number of points equals and then don't forget to put the space there because the number is going to come directly after it. And then we can get the variable for the number of points right here. Except it's not really points. We're showing them the total score. So I know that it says points and we use a variable for points. Um, maybe that should say score equals. But I think uh, telling them how many points they scored uh, is the best way to go. And then we're going to give them a percent for their actual score. So let's get the answers label here. Actually, we can do the same thing. Copy paste. And now the answers label, we're going to join the words score equals and a space. And then we've got to do something fancy here because we need to use a percentage and multiply it times 100 in order to tell what their score actually is. So let's start off with we're joining score and what we're actually going to do here with the math is that we are going to format as a decimal number uh, and we're going to tell it because otherwise it may end up uh, putting a whole bunch of decimal places and we just want it to be a two number score uh, at the most 100 percent of course. Uh, so that would be three numbers, I guess. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, tell it the number of places. So I'm just going to take this right here, and it's going to be a single integer. And then we need to do some calculations. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky, and you'll need to check this over pretty carefully. I'm going to build this to the side, and then we're going to kind of move this in. So first of all, we know at the end of um, calculating a percentage we have to multiply times 100. So I'm going to do this math here and I'm going to put it in here and then I'm going to put the number value that it's going to get multiplied by times 100. Next we're going to actually be dividing the score by the number of points. So if they got 20 points and then there's a total of 20 points possible it'll be a 1 times 100 will give them that 100%. So we're actually going to divide two things. So I'm going to go back to the math here. And we're going to divide two things. One is, well, just the amount of points that they got. Now we're calling it a score. So let's go ahead and get the score. And then we have to figure out what the total possible really was. And we're going to go back to the length of the list. So if there are 10 questions, then it's going to be 10 times 2, a total of 20 possible. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy these two things right here. Control C, Control V, and put it right in there. And that number actually has to be multiplied times 2. So I actually need to wait just a moment, and we're going to do a multiplication to double it. There's the multiplication, put it in there. I'm going to take the number of questions that there are and multiply it times two because there's a total possible of two points per question. So let's review this real quick. If we are at the end of the list, make the font size for both the questions and the answers bigger because we're going to recycle those and use them to give the score. The questions label text is going to say number of points equals and then this is the total number of points that have been added up as we've been uh, getting correct answers. The answers label has to be calculated as a percentage. Now this is where we're going to say what their score is 
and we're going to have to do a couple things. So first we find what the total number of possible points is by taking the length of the list times 2 and then we divide their score by that total possible number and then multiply it times 100 to make it a percentage with just an integer, no decimals for the percentage. Now we want to join one more thing here which is the percent symbol. So I'm going to use this join again and I'm actually going to stick it right there. So this will be the join part and then right after it we want the percent symbol. So I'm going to take this and put that percent symbol right there. So this is actually some text, a number, and then one more bit of text at the end to give us what we really want it to look like. I'm going to pause right there and then we'll continue with part two.